Um, we're here to talk about MMDVM, multi Multimode Digital Voice Modem. It's an open source project that's now three and a bit years old um, that Jonathan conceived back in the middle, early, early mid um, 2015. And uh, I've been helping ever since. Uh, let's see here. Come on, come on. A uh, bit of my history. I'll try to get out of the way so these folks over here can see. Uh, my first hardware designs, I look back, it was 1978. Uh, my first open source software, I look back, was 1982. But we didn't call it out open source at that time. That, ter that term didn't exist. We just called it sharing of our ideas. Um, things haven't, the fundamentals of open source really haven't changed that much. Um, I've been playing around in the digital radio space since 2009 with D-Star. I uh, played with it for a few months just talking and then I got interested in the guts of it. Um, in 2010, I got introduced to the AMBE codec and implemented an AMBE hardware dongle that never saw the light of day. It was just an interesting project. Um, in my spare time, I've been mentoring the students at STSU, building the CubeSat. Um, they just got a whole bunch of money and bought a kit. So the amount of development that we're doing, our custom hardware has evaporated, um, which means they might actually fly now. Um, I run the Southern California events for Eris, where the students get to talk to an astronaut on the space station over amateur radio, um, which is an incredible program for those students. Uh, and as something I forgot to put on the slide here is um, we do a lot of near space balloon launches, uh, flying all kinds of interesting experiments. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't flown in a year. Um, the weather patterns in the last two years have completely changed for Southern California. Um, we haven't had a single good day for flying. And um, I'm in San Diego. If we fly north, we land in Los Angeles. If we fly south, we land in Mexico. If we fly west, we land in the ocean. If we fly east, we can land in the Anza Borrego Desert. But if the winds are too light, we land in the mountains. If we, the winds are too strong, we land in the live munitions bombing range on the other side of the Salton Sea. And we don't retrieve our balloon payloads from there. Um, we've also managed to put three balloons in the Salton Sea so far. So we now, we aim away from the Salton Sea, we've hit the Salton Sea, so now we're working very hard to aim directly for the Salton Sea to make sure we don't put them in there. And I don't know if anybody knows much about the Salton Sea, but it's basically a fertilizer and waste runoff cesspool that's evaporating. It's lost, well, some pictures I've seen, a couple hundred feet of, shoreline, of, of water now. The shoreline is now a couple hundred feet further back than it was in the spring. Um, you don't want to go out there. It's just nasty. Um, early stuff that I was doing in the digital space. Um, I mentioned the AMBE dongle. Um, in 2001, I said, you know, I really want to start looking at what the bits are um, the, on air. Uh, so I did that little Arduino mess there with uh, a GMSK uh, modulator, demodulator chip. Uh, I ended up using the same one that um, Intel, I mean, uh, ICOM uses in their radios. Um, and then from there, a couple of years later, I started in the space of let's try and use the 7021 RF chip so we don't need a, an external radio. And that implementation there is uh, using the eval board from uh, analog devices on a basically a level shifter and packet, um, packet, depacket um, processor. And that did D-Star. Um, MMDVM, conceived by Jonathan in the spring. Um, I like this, the quote that I pulled out of a public post that he made. And we might be able to put together a multi-mode repeater with this idea he had. Um, by this time, I was helping. Um, but one of his early posts, which I didn't find in time to put in the slide, I looked at that at the time and went, you know, I'm not sure that's something I'm I'm on board with, I'm not sure it's gonna work. I thought about it some more, I thought that Jonathan was a much smarter guy than I am and jumped on board and um, 
we are here today. Um, some of you may have been here in my talk in 2015 where I held up the first prototype of the MMDBA modem and we had DSTAR only running. Um, oh, and I cannot stress enough the importance of Andy CD6JAU in Chile. He has been an incredible source of, of information, knowledge, code, bug fixes, you name it. He has been doing an incredible amount of work. But Chile's a long way from here and we weren't able to convince him to come up um, and come and join us. It would have been fantastic to have him. He just continues to contribute. Um, there are a whole bunch of others, but I have to single out Andy. Um, so this is the sl one of the slides from my presentation in 2015. Uh, we had DSTAR working. I did a little demo where we connected to one Charlie or something um, during the talk. Um, Jonathan had some of the parts of DMR working, but it wasn't quite there. And he had also started down the path of fusion and P25 were being considered and analog was being considered. <coughs> analog still isn't a full part of MMDVM. Um, there's pieces that you can do, but we haven't kind of gone that way. Um, what people have been asking for from analog is they want to be able to use an analog radio into one of the modems, have the ABE audio compression done, and then have that pushed out into the preferred digital mode. Um, we're not there yet. Do you know why in October 2015 I said Fusion was in progress? Because I just bought a Fusion radio. Yeah, and Jonathan, for you, just those who couldn't hear, Jonathan said Fusion was in progress because he just got a radio. Um, and and, uh, and so I'll just say something about Jonathan, what the, when he finds something interesting and he becomes very motivated to work on it. And so he becomes very motivated and when he has time, when people give him things. Um, so where are we today? Well, we got a lot of stuff has changed. We've got six modes fully supported. Um, two, two, three months ago, we had five mo modes supported. For five or six months ago, we had four modes supported. You'll notice a trend. There's, a, there's modes being added, not just by Jonathan, but there's lots of being contributions from a lot of people. There's more modes that could be coming along. Um, Jonathan will talk briefly about that. The Yahoo group is very vibrant and very supportive. Um, it's rare that anybody can post a question and not have it answered within minutes or just a few hours. Um, there's a lot of people around the world developing hardware and software for this. And these are just some pictures of some things that are going on. We've got my MMDVM Pi board, which is the one that lets you use the higher power radios to put on a hilltop. Um, you've got the zoom spot, you've got the zoom spot uh, USB, the Bluetooth boards, and then um, the bottom right is a is the wi uh, Zoom Spot Wi-Fi, which was kind of a failed project, which we never brought out. The original MMDVM um, was the one I showed in 2015. Um, the board there on the bottom left is the 101 board, um, which plugged into an Arduino 2A. That board um, and the processor served as well for at least two years before it kind of ran out of steam. Uh, the board on the right is the upgraded version. It now has a, um, a much higher performance ARM processor running at, a, I think we run it at 168 megahertz in this mode. It's got lots of memory. Um, the analog filters and the amplification are much improved. We've learned a lot trying to get designs that work for as many of the mobile radios that people have in their, um, in, in Jonathan's terms, in the rubbish bin. The zoom spot. So when I was here in 2015 showing the repeater, the one that used the real radios, there was several people, some of are in this room now, that talked about DMR and what they really wanted. And they wanted a little hotspot, something for the room, basically a DMR version of a DVAP. And so I left with that idea and didn't do much on it. Um, it took better part of a year before I got interested enough and motivated. Um, realized that the stuff that had been done before with the 7021 chip weren't enough horsepower. And so we 
went with an ARM, a 32-bit ARM processor. I got DSTAR working and um, that was awesome. I sent the first prototype of the ZoomSpot down to Andy in Chile. Um, he seemed really interested and that was awesome and he looked at it and about a week later he emailed me back and said, oh by the way, here's DSTAR and DMR merged in with Jonathan's firmware and I'm working on the rest of the modes. And I'm like, holy cow. And so we brought the board out and it's been very, very well received and a lot of people are very excited about the ability to, to do DMR into a little 10 milliwatt um, hotspot. Um, something that's now shipping for those people who don't want the complications of PiStar. Uh, there is an option of a, of a host board that's Bluetooth that pairs to your Android or iOS device and lets you run BlueDB software. Configuration is basically call sign, frequency, DMR ID, and uh, you're done configuring and you just pick what uh, from the uh, BlueDB software what what um, hotspot or what um, uh, what reflector, repeater, talk group, depending on which mode you're wanting to use. You want to you want to try to connect to. There's the Zoom Spot USB. We we're showing it at the booth here. It's it's in progress. It'll it supports all the same modes that the Zoom Spot does, um, but lets you do it into a into your Mac, Linux, Windows PC. Um, you can either run the um, MMDDM host software natively, or in some of the platforms you can uh, run BlueDB as well. Um, I'm hoping to have some of these out before the end of the year. Um, just a little shout out to Southern California. We've got multiple MMDVM repeaters up on hilltops, and um, these are just two of them. And the uh, the one on the right's not easy to see the the footprint, but uh, they give us pretty good coverage. We run, depending on what what when we're uh, operating them, we've run them in multiple um, multiple modes or single mode, um, and they're helping with the problem of having not enough. Um, pairs available. You know, when we had analog only in our club, that was great. And then we got DSTAR and we had to come up with pairs. And then we got DMR and we had to come up with pairs. And then people wanted some P25 and we needed pairs. And we wanted all these other modes and we just need pairs. So um, being able to share a frequency uh, and use multiple modes depending on what people want to use has been great for us. Um, as I talked about the boards, um, software and this is important, um, all the software is open source, all the software is kept on GitHub, I don't think we use any other repositories currently. It makes it nice because you, if you want to help you just fork and then push back a, a pull request to Jonathan. Um, it makes it really easy and, jo and Andy uh, maintains the one for the modems and um, boards are available in adequate stock from HRO here in the US and MLS in Europe. Um, and then hopefully Zoom spots by the end of the year, uh, USBs by the end of the year. Um, there's a question from the audience before the talk about licensing. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the hardware because that's my focus. Um, but I can start with, with software. We're, all the software is GPL2. Um, in fact, Jonathan and I were having breakfast this morning. We were discussing licensing again. We both like GPL2. It, it has served the projects, all of Jonathan's projects, well since 2009. And I think it will continue to. Um, we want to make sure that it's, all the code is available to everybody and for them to use. Um, but we really would like people to comply with the license terms. Not everybody does, and we both get grumpy when that happens. Um, for the hardware, we went with a Creative Commons license uh, because GPL didn't really apply to hardware. Um, there's three main pieces. That, if I'm doing the elevator pitch for, for licensing, attribution. If you use it, you need to say who helped create before you. I just like to hear from people when they use the stuff. I'd like to know that my call sign has been put in the code when it was first, or in the schematics when they're first released, and I'd like to see that there's attribution. My, my schematics, if, if I've taken pieces from other people, their stuff has got attribution. Um, 
non-commercial. This is a contentious clause. My opinion and from what I've read and the attorneys I've talked to basically say, if you are a club or an individual and you want to take one of these designs and make one or make one, a handful for the club, knock yourself out. Get in touch, let me know what you're doing. If you've got questions, I'm happy to help. When you order 100,000 of these things, I, I have a problem. Um, and uh, that's kind of the legal interpretation that I've been given. Um, there's a lot of armchair people on, on, uh, on, the, on the nets without legal degrees and they have opinions and they're welcome to them. Um, my attorney says different. Um, share alike, meaning if you use the design and you make changes, please post or make available those changes. And if you do, everybody's happy. Um, there's one other part to Creative Commons called PLUS. Um, and what that means is that there are additional permissions applied to this particular design. And in this case, when we do a board and it's Creative Commons BYNCSA plus, it just means that all of the creators, all the way from the very, very first person, all, of, all the way through have given permission for additional rights, which is why you'll see commercial products with it. If they say plus, then it means everybody that's contributed has given, given their approval for those, for those additional rights. Um, and for GPL2, um, we, uh, there's a lot of discussions about GPL2 and whether it's the right license and we just chose it and if you, that's, that's the way it is. Um, we also have a request for these designs that they be for amateur use only and we do not want these bits of software and hardware put into commercial hilltop repeaters and being used for business and uh, we'd appreciate that. And the last comment I'll have you here is that um, if you're involving yourself in the project, whether as a customer or a developer, um, please consider working on with a product that is uh, from, especially for hardware from companies that are complying with the licenses. And uh, perhaps not sourcing your product from, say, ALI Express. Um, the way we did it.